to tonight's class. My name is Jeff Gibby. I'll be kicking us off tonight. It's good to have you, and we have a very special guest today, so I'm glad you're able to make it. First of all, happy holidays, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever it is you want to celebrate, uh, Happy Ramadan, Happy New Year's. Uh, welcome to today's class. Um, today we do have a very, very special guest, um, two-time international trade champion, um, uh, just came back from Paris. Uh, a good friend of Metastock, actually somebody that we have put a lot of work into uh, getting his indicators to work in Metastock, and somebody that we view as actually a, a strategic ally of ours for, for going forward. You know, we'd love to bring you really good presenters and really good people, um, and uh, Rob is somebody that we're really thrilled to be associated with, to say it, uh, it as lightly as we can, or to say it as bluntly as I can, I guess. Anyway, Rob, I'm going to go ahead and um, let you come on here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kind of turn the webinar room over to you, and uh, I'm going to let you kind of take center stage now. So w let's get right into it. I want to go through a lot of different stuff here, and I'm also uh, joined here uh, tonight by uh, uh, Bobby. Bobby is my success coach. Uh, several of you that have worked with me over the years uh, have now gotten to be introduced to Bobby. He's here helping me. Uh, our student family has grown exponentially, and so he's helped me to work directly with the students now um, and be a liaison, answer some of the day-to-day -day questions that pop up, and then um, you know those that need to get to me, um, you know he then escalates to me there so I can still take uh, the same great care of the student family but you know can't really clone you know he's he's my clone basically so I went from a Robert to a, a Bobby <laughs> so um, so he's here with me this evening as well and uh, so let's kick this off and um, first things first just want you to understand of course that um, the uh, d trading involves risk, and we all know that. Uh, we all want to make lots and lots of money and have absolutely no risk, but the reality is there's large potential for rewards as well as risk. And I know that Metasoc, you know, uh, shared some thoughts with you on that a little bit ago, but I just want to remind people of that as well uh, because it's easy to get lost in, you know, wow, you know, winning trading competitions, doing great in the trading room, whatever the case may be. But the reality is there's also, you know, huge risks in that as well. So um, over the years, I've done some incredible and extraordinary things in my trading. I've also had some uh, huge losses along the way too. Learned a lot from those and went right on to go ahead and, uh, you know, go on to do uh, bigger and better things uh, into the future. So, you know, like I said, we're all, you know, this all-time highs with our student family. And, and growth there, uh, so just really exciting stuff. But you know, trading does involve risks there as well. So keep that in mind. If you have questions, uh, you know, about risk management as we go through the evening, I'll be happy to try to answer those for you as well. So just a little bit about me for those of you that don't know anything about me. Um, the biggest thing that you should know, I guess, is that you know what I do is a lot of people talk about trading, and I think Jeff will go ahead and second that. Uh, he runs across traders all over the country um, and talks to different ones at expos and shows that a lot of people talk about trading. Very few of us actually trade for real. Um, and what I've done is taken that to a whole new level. Not only do I trade, but I go ahead and I trade at these live live money only competitions, both domestically and internationally. Um, and I've had the good fortune the last two years in a row. I got invited to this uh, a, a big major event over in uh, France called the Salon du Trading event, and um, several Americans had gone before me and uh, never had any success. Most of them got blown out the first round of the competitions, so they brought me over because I'd won, as you can see, several other you know domestic competitions, and uh, I was fortunate enough to win. And you know, this is kind of a big deal. We can talk more, you know, just briefly about that, so you can understand a little bit about um, the you know competition as a whole. I don't know if I'll show you some pictures of that, but uh, then I went back and did it a second year in a row, um, which was you know pretty extraordinary to you know to be up against you know 15 other hand selected traders from around the world uh, and then go through this process. So the um, you know it's a pretty big, uh, pretty big deal. Yeah, I have gone ahead and traded again. Against him before, and uh, you know, he had the fortune to win as well. But th that's you know uh, irrelevant. So you know what we're just talking about here is the opportunity to trade it, you know, and and show that we actually do it real, and and then go into these big international events and uh, you know. Uh, 
show our wherewithal. So that's the what's pretty cool about it. So let's go ahead, and so this is that event over in Salon Detroit. You see, you know, all these different traders uh, from different countries uh, going head to head there. Uh, what it looks like, you see, big rooms of people and everybody kind of lined up. Uh, here's yours truly over in the lower uh, right hand corner here <laughs> in this particular case. Um, and uh, now, what I want you to understand real quickly. So we're just we're talking about the competition for a few minutes, and we're going to get into this great setup. Um, I want you to understand the the uh, challenges that were kind of faced in this event because many of you trade with distractions. Whether in, in many of you have second careers, so in fact, it'd be great to while I'm showing this, how many of you do have second careers while you still try to trade and or you swing trade, but you have a second career of some sort. Yeah, so exactly. So many of you can relate to this, so trading with distractions and that. So let me just go ahead and <laughs> – that's great, uh, some of the answers there. Thanks so much. Um, and so with the um, with this, what you should understand is – so here I've got a room full of people that don't speak my language. Um, I went ahead the night before the competition had to switch hotels because uh, the organizers forgot that I was speaking to institutional clients over in Munich, Germany. Uh, and so I was actually coming from Germany directly to France, uh, so they forgot about that and so they didn't have a hotel. So. We had to switch. We had to get into a hotel a day earlier. Well, the problem was then before the the night before the competition, the hotel that we stayed in wasn't available for that night. So we actually had to switch hotels uh, into the official hotel we were supposed to be in. Um, and so you know, here we are, midnight before the big competition, having to switch rooms. Then you'll notice this. What what is this uh, gory thing? Well, this is my arm. I got bit while I was over in Munich, Germany. And by the way, um, I showed the people in Las Vegas here just a few weeks ago. I still have these marks right here on my arm um, and so the uh, you know a, a couple months after this original bite I still have this but this happened right before the competition and this was my arm you can see it was all swollen up uh, right before the competition so I wasn't feeling too well the day of the competition um, in, in addition to all that we have the uh, the trading competition itself and these were the judges that stood over me again this is a live real money competition this is the head judge and then these were the three judges actually standing over me verifying validating each one of my trades this was the final round this was my opponent over here and so here we had been going at this now for I don't know at that point like 10 hours 11 hours on the day we'd been in this trading competition it was down to me and uh, one other gentleman and uh, you can see though you have all these these judges standing over you validating the trades writing all the trades down for the audience uh, to review and scrutinize and everything else and then of course they could see it up on the screen as well so a lot a lot of uh, distractions taking place during that time um, but the, the setup that I'm going to share with you tonight is also uh, the one that I helped use to win uh, the uh, – oh, I think I got bit by a nasty spider, yeah, to answer your question there. It was it was pretty ugly. Uh, we, we As you can see, I had a pretty nasty reaction. Um, and actually, like I said, two, over two months later, I still have those big marks. So uh, it was a very uncomfortable day, as you can imagine, during the trading competition um, uh, through that process. But – so I also, the setup that we're going to talk about tonight is actually the setup that I used to win the international competition, or sorry, the uh, trading competition in New York as well earlier uh, earlier in the year. So um, it, it's one, like I said, it's near and dear to my heart, both on a trading basis and a, um, uh, a um, uh, swing trading basis. And so with that, let's talk about the setup a little bit. Okay, we got lots to cover with that, and I want to show you uh, great examples uh, with the Metastock platform here. And uh, so let's go ahead and get right into those. Okay, <laughs> yeah, a German spider. There you go. Um, you know, built for perfection. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, boy, that got me. So the um, as we look at the accumulation distribution breakout trade. Again, before I go any for, further, I want to just basically let you know that for all of you swing traders here, this is actually part. In fact, this is part. Of, this is our uh, options alert portfolio. Uh, you'll see here about 50 trades on this portfolio here. Uh, we still have some of them are actually open, and uh, so you can see here out of the the 50, uh, we've had about 46 of them closed. 44 of them were winners. Two of them were losses there, and then we got you know four open positions. So 
this is the actual portfolio that we use this for. So what I'm doing is I'm analyzing the underlying instruments and then going ahead and making the determination, our options. And our options program is so highly successful because I look at it um, as far as what's going on with the underlying instrument using some of the methodologies I'm actually sharing with you tonight. And it's made for an incredibly successful options portfolio. Uh, here's kind of the facts on that, that, that portfolio there. Um, you know, even just trading one contract, and I know many of you trade anywhere from two to ten contracts. Uh, in fact, how many of you do trade two to ten contracts on um, uh, your options trades? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so you know, that's just common practice. A lot of people will do two to ten contra uh, or contracts on their options trades. So this is just based on the the gross P and L of one contract, uh, approximately fifteen hundred fifty four dollars based on those trades. So um, you know, really great stuff. And um, you know, that's just the facts. That's you know, it is what it is. Um, and so what we're doing is using this. This is one of the methodologies among several that we have in our options program that we're using. So I. That's why I wanted to kind of show you. We're not just talking about, um, and yeah, that was real money. That's those are real money trades. And the um, it's not just intraday, it's end of day. So pretty cool stuff. So with that being said, let's talk about the accumulation distribution breakout trade. What is it? Basically, it's a price action based breakout trade with some science put behind it as well. Okay, and uh, when do I use it? It's most effective in trending markets. It's even better when tied to strong fundamental analysis for you longer term investors. How many of you have ever uh, that are longer term investors have ever found a great fundamental trade, but then you sat on you so you invested in it and then you had to sit on dead money for six months, a year, two years or more. Um, but you had a great fundamental story. You had to wait for you know, a very long time till it gets discovered and then finally starts moving. Well, what I like to have people do that are longer term investors is find that great fundamental story, but then wait for my breakout to go ahead and take place, uh, you know, like using strategies just like this so that I don't have to sit on dead money waiting for it to go ahead and actually materialize. Does that make sense? So um, that's why I think it's great from this perspective as well. Now, um, how do I identify it? So let's talk about some of the rules first, and then we can go back and uh, look at lots of examples, okay? Uh, both from an intraday and end of day basis. So we're basically looking back at approximately 20 uh, bars in the backdrop, and we're looking for bars where uh, the open and the close um, are approximately 45, 50% or more off their high in an uptrend or off their low in a downtrend. Uh, so what we're basically doing is asking ourselves with, with a candlestick, how much of the wick is showing from high to low? Uh, is it approximately 45, 50%? Now, before we go any further, let's look at some examples just to avoid any confusion, okay? So here's what we're looking for. In a downtrend, gang, in a downtrend, I'm looking for bars. So here's the high of the bar, right? That's the top of the wick. Here's the bottom of the wick. I'm looking for bars where the close of the bar now Okay. The open of the bar was somewhere up here or higher, and the close of the bar was somewhere up here or higher. Basically, 45 to 50 percent off the the in this case, um, uh, you know, the low, right? So we want this to go ahead and basically be space. Okay, we want this just to be wick. So we want the body of the candle to be 45, 50% or more off the low. Does everybody understand that? So let's take a look at this together before we go any further to make sure you can understand that conceptually. So we're in a downtrend. So what's happening now is the bar opens up somewhere between here and up here. And then you're traveling way down. Well, then I need that bar to close 45 to 50% off the low as well. So I need at least 45 to 50% of this bar to be wick down below. Now, armed with that information, gang, does this bar look like it's 45, 50% or more off the low of wick? Absolutely. No question about it. Now, as we go ahead, excellent. So now as we go ahead and we take a look here, at the next bar, how about this next bar right here? Does this bar look to be, we take the high, we take the low, and then we're looking for it to be 45, 50% off the low here. 
Does that bar fit that criteria? Are we at least 45, 50% off the low? Okay, exactly. So we're in, in all of these, we are 45 or 50% or more off the low. Exactly. Excellent identification. So in a downtrend, we're looking for what we refer to as accumulation here, and we're identifying that accumulation by looking for bars that are 45, 50% or more off their low. Now, yeah, it's, it's very close to most of the number two, number three, and number four are close to the 50% mark, right? And again, so if we're eyeballing it, is it roughly 45, 50% off that low? Now, in an uptrend, in an uptrend gang, what we're looking for is we've got the low of the bar and the high of the bar. Now, what we're looking for is bars that close 45, 50% off their high. So from the low to the high, we're looking for the bars that are showing more than 45 to 50% or more of wick off the high. Do we have that in these four examples? Are all four of these 45, 50% or more off their highs? Okay, excellent. All qualify. You got it. Nice work, gang. Nice work. Okay, so as we go ahead and we look at this now, let's talk about the theory behind this, and then we'll go back to the rules behind it. What I'm looking for, okay, and I deal with institutional clients. Like I said, well, we just talked about one example that where I was dealing with institutionals over in Munich, Germany here just a few months ago before the international trading competition. I've got countless institutionals that are part of my nightly video newsletters that I work with. Um, I, I deal with a lot of institutional customers, okay, a lot of capital managers um, and institutional types. So the um, what you need to understand is that I'm trying to identify areas where those types of people have either short-term or long-term areas of buying or selling into a market. So what I'm looking at here is this. Um, as we let's go back here, in a downtrend, I'm looking for a bar in a downtrend. You may be asking about the time frame. The time frame doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. I use this strategy on a two-minute bar. I use this strategy on daily charts. You're going to see examples of both in just a few minutes. In fact, I'm going to show you some of the actual trades I took during the international trading competition as well. Okay, so you'll see how it's used on an intraday basis. Um, you'll also go ahead and see it um, on a you know the end of day basis. You already saw some of the major success we're having in our um, you know options portfolio using uh, various strategies of mine too. One of which I'm sharing with you this evening. So um, what I'm looking for is in a downtrend. I'm looking for a, a market that not only so it's been going down, going down, going down. I'm looking for bars that not only where the market was stopped. But then the price was actually driven up at least 45, 50% off that bar. And again, that's whether it's a two-minute, a five-minute, a 15-minute, an hourly, a daily, a weekly bar. And you're going to see examples of all those um, where it's at least 45, 50% off that low is what I'm looking for. Okay, So I want to see where some institution or institutions had so much inventory to accumulate there or liquidate if they're exiting a short position that not only did they stop the market from going down, but they actually drove the market back up, showing a lot of power in that bar. Does that make sense? That's what I'm looking for. And by the way, the question was how many sequential bars uh, does this take? Great question, Jim. Um, actually, this is a, a single bar event. Single bar event there. Okay. And so, um, so what what's happening is so you you see four bars over here, uh, Jim. Those are just four individual isolated examples. Okay. In fact, let's just go to an example real quick, that we and then we can go back to all the rules in that. So what's happening here, Jim, you'll see we are in a downtrend on the weekly chart of Apple. Well, there's my bar. Does everybody see it? Where we went ahead and we got 45, 50% or more off the low. 
Well, great. So now what I'm doing is I'm marking that bar, and then once we show that that inventory is no longer there and we break through that, then I'm expecting the big whoosh down. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So we're looking for a bar, and then we're going out to approximately 20 bars into the future. If at some point we break down below that bar, I'm expecting a bigger moves to the downside. This was a weekly chart. You'll see here Apple actually dropped um, approximately $40 that next week. It was about $30 or so from when the time when it broke below that low. So it's a one-bar event. It's a one-bar signal bar, uh, Jim. And uh, then, you know, so there's the signal bar, and then here's the execution bar where we finally break down below that low. So here's another example of that right over here, uh, right up over here as well. So we're going to talk more about the rules in just a moment, but there's single, uh, there's single signal bars, okay? So I hope that helps. Now, so in an uptrend... Don't forget what we're looking for then is bars that come 45, 50% off the low. What I'm looking for is where institutionals have so much inventory to sell that they are going ahead not only stopping the market from going up, but they actually were starting to drive it back down. That's showing very aggressive selling. Okay. Now, what I'm looking for is at that point after we you know, we draw that line out into the future from the high of that bar, and then I'm looking for a break through that bar because I want to see when that institutional selling is no longer there. Does that make sense? This is this, uh, let's go back now to the rules, and then we're going to look at lots of examples. Okay. So again, now we're looking back over the last 20 bars. And we're looking for those wicks, basically, 45, 50% off the high in an uptrend or 45, 50% off the low in a downtrend. That's what we're asking ourselves. How much wick is basically showing? All right, so where's my entry? Well, for futures trading, it's going to be one tick either above or below those signal bars. We'll look at that in great detail in just a few minutes. Of course, obviously, in an equity, it's then going to be one cent above or below those key areas. All right, now. If you want to go ahead and test your own methodologies for two cents, two ticks, three cents, three ticks, you're welcome to go ahead and do that. Gang, what I, I found honestly for me over time is when that when that accumulation or distribution area finally breaks, usually it's a pretty decent explosion. And uh, so I've personally found for me typically one tick is what I use. Okay. Now, where's my exit? My exit is going ahead and a trailing stop. And I'll tell you that that just comes from sheer experience. We all want to make as much money on every single trade as we possibly can. We want to maximize our gains. Um, but at the same time, we, we don't want our winners to turn into a loser. So my biggest loss in my personal trading career resulted from, you know, I'd, I had all these huge wins over the course, like 16 months, you know, in these 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, even $30,000 type days, you know, and this huge run for 16 months. And, and so what I did was I looked at this trade and I was only up several thousand or a couple thousand dollars on the trade. And I'm like, look, I want at least $10,000 on this trade. And so I didn't have a stop out there. Uh, I had a heavy position on. Bernanke came out, was speaking and everything, and it went ahead and it uh, blew to the downside there. And uh, so, you know, I lost money on that when I could have completely avoided that with my trailing profit target. So it, what happens is that uh, I found in my personal trading that uh, the best thing to do to try to maximize the gains but don't turn that winner into a loser is to use a trailing stop. In fact, how many of you have ever done that? How many of you here have ever gone ahead and had a trade? You just wanted a few more ticks, a few more cents, a few more dollars, and then you turned around and watched the whole thing become a loser. Anybody here besides myself ever do that in your trading career? Sure. So you have to learn to adapt. Um, you know, and, and trading is, and listen, gang, that's why my company is the, the, the name it is. Become a better trader. Uh, I mean, many of you are familiar with, you know, guys like George Soros, right, who, you know, made a billion dollars, right, trading uh, one year. Did anybody ever, you know, but the next year lost a billion dollars, right? So we all go ahead and, you know, you, you all having more money, all having bigger accounts, 
all, you know, it, it, many of you have heard the story of Victor Niederhofer. We can, we can go on for hours about the trials and tribulations. All being bigger in this business means is that you can make more fantastic and impressive mistakes. <laughs> so it's, it's always an evolution of becoming a better trader. That's the real world. So, yeah, I, I see all of your answers there. Thank you so much for being honest. Um, and, uh, you know, that that's awesome. So uh, great stuff. So with that being said, I, I'm personally, what I found over time, this split the baby with the bathwater. Um, and the uh, what I found over time is that the trailing stops is kind of that happy compromise to try to let it run, uh, but not turn that winner into a loser. Okay. Um, now another thing I want you to think about is the concept of rocket fuel, which we're going to talk about. If it's moved a large range to try to break out of the signal bar then you may have used up too much of your market energy to actually allow you to continue to the downside and a reversal back against you is much higher. Uh, this does have diverse applications for instruments and time frames, and I can't emphasize that enough. In fact, I kind of I showed you just a few moments ago how we you know use setups like this and others in our options trading program, and it's phenomenal. Well, how am I doing that? Um, do we have a successful options program just because we're great options analysts? No. We go ahead and we have a great options program because we're analyzing the underlying instruments really well. And then we're going ahead and making our determinations on how we want to trade. So this is really great for those of you that trade the underlying instruments. So for all of you swing traders, where you can see just how awesome this has been like for our options you know uh, portfolio okay so um so that's why it says here diverse applications for different instruments obviously you've seen and heard and you're going to see some actual examples how you used to win international trading competitions but then now you can see how it can really help uh, your um, uh, other asset classes as well uh don't forget re trill your entries to re reduce risk to the mean i have a lot of students that go ahead and use this in overnight trading Forex trading, overnight uh, futures trading. And what happens is with the futures trades, a lot of times, in fact, if, if you guys watch my nightly videos, um, how many of you get either my free or premium nightly video newsletters here out of curiosity? Because if you do, you hear me talk about this a lot. So I just kind of want to make sure I understand. Okay, great. All right, wonderful. So you guys know that I talk about these key accumulation and distribution breakdown levels all the time, right? Um, and so the um, and if if you don't get the free ones, you're welcome to go ahead and get the free ones. Uh, in fact, you can sign right up on the front page of the website there, becomeabettertrader.com. Uh, in fact, you can just get this little little eight part video series here. It's just small little video snippets of some different things. You get that right on the front page of my website. Get access to the free nightly videos. Um, so that's something you guys can all do right now um, or right after we're done here on the front page. So that's kind of a little fun, neat thing for you to do and start learning some different strategies and little micro snippets okay the um, uh, but what, what happens is now we got the, the premium ones well so if you guys have listened to me and I, you hear me talk about these things even in the free videos I'll talk about these key um, areas of breakouts or uh, breakdowns and identify those key accumulation distribution areas well what you'll often see into the overnight session is we'll go ahead and we will break down or break out of those key levels uh, and it may go 20 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 ticks often, and then come back down by the next day uh, and roll back into the area. So that's why, once again, that trailing process is so important because it's a crime to watch this thing go 30, 40, 50 ticks in your direction and not go ahead and lock in any of that. I just, uh, that's my personal belief. Everybody's responsible for their own trading, but I think if you let something go that far and you haven't put in an automated trailing stop of some sort, um, you know, there's there's some opportunities for improvement there, so with that being said, uh, you know trail the entry is a reduced risk uh, reversion to the mean. That's what RTM stands for there, and then uh, trading the direction of the 45 degree angle 20 period exponential moving average. Okay, 20 period exponential moving average. So the um, uh, with that uh, with that being said, uh, let's let's take a look at some of these different things. We already looked at how we can use it in different 
asset classes, how we're using it uh, real live in our you know um, uh, trading. Obviously, we discuss this in our premium day trading, premium swing trading video, as well as a little bit even in our free videos there, as you see. Um, we've reviewed what it is, what an accumulation uh, bar looks like. So in a downtrend, we're looking for a bar that comes back up. And then what we want to do is wait till it breaks back down below there. Show me that the people that were buying from here to here, show me that they're no longer there because once they run away, once they're gone, that market is free to move back into the direction of the original trend. Okay. So with that being said, let's take a look now at multiple examples on daily and intraday basis um, to make sure we can really drive this point home uh, and really help you out tonight. And so with that being said, what we're looking for first is that nice angle of attack, typically that uh, 45 degree angle. And again, don't pull out your, your protractors or any sort of other crazy measuring device, gang. If you just kind of eyeball it um, and uh, you know, that what we're going ahead and uh, doing there is um, if it looks approximately 45 degree angle, uh, great. Um, that's what we're kind of looking for. Um, the whole theory is we're trying to identify, in this case, a downtrend, or we're trying to identify an uptrend. Well, as you can imagine, if it's trading sideways, is that an uptrend or a downtrend? If it's slightly up, slightly down, those aren't really trends, are they? They can very easily be reversed. Does that make sense? Yes, it will be. The The angle will be highly dependent on the amount of data that you're taking a look at. So really, um, like in my case, I go ahead and base it on the time frames that I'm looking at. I look at intraday charts and end of day charts. So I'm usually looking at approximately 20 degree, uh, sorry, 20 bars of data on each of those different time frames. Okay. So really, what have we been doing for the last 20 bars? I mean, if we can't even have a downtrend for the purpose of 20 bars, we don't really have a good solid downtrend. It could just be a five or you know 10 bar phenomenon. Um, so I really like to look at the last 20 bars and ask myself from left to right on that screen, are we you know around a 45 degree angle? Okay. So uh, and really, it's a matter of not overthinking that concept, gang. Listen, when I'm in a live trading competition against 15 other top traders from around the world, uh, all there to do one thing, take out the American, um, you know, I need to go ahead and, uh, you know, I, I don't have time to think like, gee, is that a 42 and a half percent angle? Is that a 48% uptrend? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got to look at these things fast and make decisions fast. Does that make sense? So you need to do the same, and we, we don't want to overthink it. So with that being said, as we're looking here at Apple, now this is a real-life example that I'd uh, given you back in my uh, free videos. And um, what you see here is the weekly chart was clearly in a downtrend here. So um, what happened was we identified this area where the market had been in this downtrend, and not only did it stop, but it went ahead and it reversed back at least 45, 50% off the low. Would everybody agree that was 45, 50% off the low there? Do you see it? Does that make uh, that show up okay on your screens? 45, 50% off the low. Okay, awesome, great. So now what we're looking for, so here's the key. So now uh, this has told me that for some reason an institution or institutions have found value in this area and they're either buying initial entries, they're either going ahead and taking fresh long side trades or they, found, they feel that it's come from way up here, gone all the way down here and now it's time to start taking some profits. Okay, and so they're covering their positions. So what I want to do, though, is I now want to see if at some point here that institution or institutions no longer has any more inventory to buy in this case. And if to see then if that original downtrend is still in place. So in other words, does the one or a few institutions dry up and the overall consensus of the market kicks back in. That's what we're looking for. That's what's important here. Okay. Um, 
and as far as volume, a lot of times these will also uh, uh, be you know, uh, uh, be complemented by high volume. There'll be short-term turns in the market there, okay? But high volume is not, I repeat, is not necessary. In fact, you know, like I said, one could argue that lower volume just means that there was that much less participation. It's just one or two firms instead of several firms finding interest at that level. So make sure you go ahead and do not go ahead and put too much emphasis on how much volume is on that bar because I can make a case for both light volume and heavy volume. The key is what I wanted to do here is break below that level. Now you'll notice that for the next one, two, three, four, five weeks. For five weeks, it traded at or above that level. This is the important part. For the next, uh, for the next five weeks, it traded at or above that key level. But you notice that as soon as we went ahead and broke down below there, look what happened. This thing went ahead and dropped like a stone from 420 down here to um, you know, well below the 390 area. Okay, it was a very fast drop in one week, thirty you know, over thirty bucks. Does everybody see that? As soon as that level of accumulation gave out, there was no more inventory. There, that institution or institutions that was buying at that level, whether you know whether it was on the whim of one uh, big whale of an investor or it was several people, they're gone. And as soon as it was gone, but yet we were still in a downtrend whoosh to the downside. Now, let me ask you a question. Okay, Where is the stop? Where's the stop loss on this trade? The stop loss on this trade is one tick above the high of the signal bar. One tick or one penny above the high of the signal bar. Do you see it? So, in other words, if I get into the short on this bar when it breaks down below and then it trades back above, one penny above that high of that signal bar, game over. Okay, does that make sense? That's the stop loss. Okay, did everybody catch that? That's the stop loss there. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at uh, several more examples of this in action uh, as we go along. Now, let me, because this is the part that's the coolest part about it and yet the most missed that I find amongst traders. They feel that if they've taken the trade and they've, got, they've taken their profit on the trade and now all of a sudden another signal comes up, they feel that they can't take the next signal, okay? Um, from my perspective, I don't feel that way. I don't feel that I have to avoid the next signal. Uh, in fact, I welcome the next signal. And in fact, during that trading competition in France, you'll see I took the trade and then like four minutes later, like on the two minute chart, four minutes later, I was taking the same trade again. Okay. Uh, after I got out. So I feel very strongly that you know, getting more signals is a great thing. So let's go ahead and look across here. So here's that same Apple weekly chart. Does this bar look about 45, 50% off the low? And how about this bar? 45, 50% off the low? 45, 50% off the low? And the answer is yes. All of those were 45, 50% off the low. So the challenge I have for you, can each one of these bars be used as a signal bar going across? Can I draw the line across looking for a breakdown? Right here, can I draw the line across looking for a breakdown? Can I draw the line across looking for a breakdown? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so basically the, the trailing the stop, typically I like to go ahead and lock in at least 50% of the profit. Okay, and yes, the answer, Victor, is definitely. Um, you can go ahead and, and so for all of you that went ahead and answered there, these are all fresh signal bars. Okay, so what happens is this bar, I'm now drawing a horizontal line out for the next 20 bars. Okay, but in, in the meantime, another one actually came up again. Well, do I still have my downtrend? Yes, I do still have my downtrend. So where's my entry? The entry is one tick below the low 
of this bar right here. Okay. Now, where's your stop loss? One tick above the high of this uh, signal bar, right? So your entry is one tick below. And then what you're doing is at least locking in 50% um, of the profit that comes in. So if you've locked in $5, you want to go ahead, or you've made $5, you want to at least lock in $2.50. These are my, my thoughts. These are my rules. Until such time as we get down to a key support or resistance level. For instance, in this case, psychologically, the $400 level is a key support level. $500 would be a key resistance level to the upside, as an example. When you get to these big round number support or resistance levels, or it might be a daily, weekly, or monthly pivot point, there's a host of numerous, maybe some of you that use Market Profile, for instance, identify key areas there uh, in the backdrop of support or resistance. There's a host of different ways that you guys can do it, just a plethora of different ways out there. I typically use the round number support resistance levels and um, uh, like pivots as an example. So the uh, because for me, most of the time, by the time market profile uh, fires off a signal, I've already detected the work in my work long before market profile. Um, so in fact, my work is usually what keeps it trading at those areas for a while to generate the signals in uh, market profile. So um, but whatever your, your favorite methodology is for determining key support and resistance, once I start finding this approaching one of those key support or resistance levels, that's where I'm going to look to go ahead and tighten up those stops uh, quite a bit. Does that make sense to everybody? Let's try one more example here. Okay, so here, so here's an example of this in action. This is uh, some live student trading of, of one of my students here. Um, and uh, he was here for uh, mentoring and he's been in my live trading room for a little bit. So um, this is a live example of how this happened. Notice what was happening here. So he took a trade here uh, based on my uh, methodology. Uh, so we've gone ahead and fired off some signals and uh, you'll see what happened here was he was long here the Japanese yen. Now, what happened though was you'll see that there was this pivot resistance up above. Does everybody see this green, this red line up here? Can you guys see that okay? Um, actually, hey, um, Miguel, the uh, the time frame is, well, like, here's, here's what my live charts look like on an intraday basis, a two minute, five minute, 15 minute hourly and daily chart. For my swing trading and options trading, I'm looking at daily and weekly charts, okay? So here's what happens. Notice what's happened now, gang. Does everybody see how when we went ahead, and we, we'd gone up here about 13 ticks, and so we moved our trailing stop up to about half of that. Does everybody see that? Okay, now watch this. Okay, notice what happened as we got closer to the, uh, the, the pivot point, we then moved it up to approximately 80%. Why? Because there's a much higher risk as we get to that key resistance level that it's going to pull back. Everybody following me? So this is trading. Um, you know, this is an example of this on a live um, you know, trading account of how this went ahead and played out. So usually I'm starting locking in 50%, but as we get closer to a key resistance level or support level, we're getting up there closer to 80%. Then we go ahead and um, what we do from there is right when we get up towards those key resistance levels, in this case, see how now we are right up there at that key resistance? Does everybody see that? Now we've moved it up to like practically 90%, 90, 95%. We're basically putting it right under price because the risk is so high that it's going to go ahead and reverse here that we go ahead and we trail it up. Um, you know, to make sure we're not going to give all that money back. Does that make sense to everybody? So that's what I'm saying. We initially want to lock in 50%, and then as we get closer to key support or resistance levels, we're going to trail that up to make sure we don't give that money back. Does everybody here understand that very important concept? Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead now. Um, so that's kind of, you know, uh, some examples from the real world of trading on that. Uh, let's uh, get us back to our presentation here. So with that being said, what we're then looking at is going ahead and we're looking at fresh signals. Let's look at this over and over on some different uh, examples here uh, to drive this home. 
Okay. Yes, it works very well from an options perspective because here, here's the thing. Okay, so Jerry, I mean, you already saw kind of how our options program is performing. It's ridiculously awesome um, at this point. And, you know, what, what can you say about it? I'm, I'm very excited about it. I'm very proud. So, Jerry, work with me on this now. So, um, we go ahead and we, we get a trade uh, that fires off a signal, right? So, now we've fired off a signal uh, here. And we're looking across, and as we're looking across, we, we see a signal. But I don't trade the underlying instrument. I don't go ahead and trade the underlying instrument. Let's say I only trade options. What are some examples of some types of trades if I'm betting that this market's going to go down because now we've broken down below here? What are some different types of trades? If I'm betting it's not going to go up here, but it's going to go down this way, what are some types of options trades that I can put on? Okay, you could buy puts, you could sell calls, right? All depends what, what your level of options expertise is and, and uh, you know the liquidity of your accounts and so on and so forth. But it, obviously, there's different types of spreads you can put on, all of them betting that this market is not going to go ahead and go up, right? So there's lots of different great options, all pun intended, uh, you know, with the options side of it, if you don't want to trade or can't trade the underlying X, you know, instrument, which is understandable, you're sitting there at um, uh, you know four hundred and thirty dollars a share. A lot of people don't have thousands of shares laying around there. So, uh, but they do have uh, potentially enough money in their options accounts to go ahead and leverage, um, you know, up through their options positions. Makes sense. So, um, what you could do is put on your favorite option strategy, betting that this market's going to go down. Okay, and the beauty is, if you sell options, and that's one of the things we love to do as professional options traders, well, then you're just basically betting that it's either going to go down, go sideways, or maybe even go slightly up, maybe even go slightly against you, but you can still make money if you're selling that call, correct? So you actually got multiple opportunities there. So with that being said, um, what we have here is lots of different uh, opportunities. Um, here you'll see over and over this setup in action on Apple. Okay, so does everybody see those uh, signals firing off over and over again on Apple, both on the weekly chart and on the daily chart? Uh, Victor, this particular moving average is just a 20-period exponential moving average. Obviously, I use uh, several more of uh, uh, moving averages than these, but for this particular setup, um, it just requires the 20-period exponential moving average. Let's go ahead and move along. Um, and uh, actually, I should find out uh, from Jeff uh, how much more time uh, he's going to let me kind of position here. Cause I got some more things I want to show you. Uh, Jeff, can I keep going for a little bit? Do you guys mind if I keep going for a little bit? I got more great stuff to show you here. Okay, that's a resounding yes. Um, so unless uh, Jeff goes ahead and uh, it was set for two hours, I think. I don't know if it was set for two hours, but I'm going to go ahead and keep going here. Um, uh, but as long as you know, Jeff says it's okay there. So, okay, I'm here till you're done. Okay, great. Well, let's keep, let's keep going here. Um, so with that being said, what, here's Tesla. You know, so with Tesla, you'll notice that it's hard to see the scaling at this point because you know, this thing went up for so long. But if you were to look back, um, what you would see with Tesla here, we actually locked in that 50% off the high bar way back over here. 50% off the high bar over here, and then all of you should be able to see it uh, pretty easily on this bar, 50% off the high on this bar right here, okay? So, and then you look at these moves that, uh, you know, came out of these, even the, these moves, and if you're trailing up your trades, you know, it jumped up here at roughly $20 over those next couple weeks just on that one trade alone. Over here, you know, obviously it was a little bit more dramatic earlier on, uh, where it went from 60 to 120 after it broke out from this one right here, okay? Now, um, so that's based on the weekly charts of Tesla right there. <laughs> breakfast is the limit, okay. Yeah, because by breakfast time, I, I, I may not be as excited and happy as I am, despite my love for trading. <laughs> I'm going to be a little hungry. So as we go ahead and we look at uh, the, the um, uh, daily chart here of Tesla, you'll notice the same thing, right? Here's 50% off the high. 50% off the high, 
50% off the high, 50% off the high, 50% off the high. You guys see this? You guys see just how many re-entry opportunities on, day, on uh, Tesla there were just in this two-month period of time? So that's what I'm talking about. Whether you're a swing trader, whether you're an intraday trader, the next opportunities are usually right around the corner. In fact, let's take a look at some of those right now. So right here is examples of this on an intraday basis. These are actually some of the actual trades I took during the international trading competition here um, back in September. I won this competition a second year in a row. So you'll notice right here, um, this is the trade. This is the signal bar right here. Does everybody see? Do you agree that was 50% off the uh, uh, the lows there? Right there. Now. What is also a little bit hard to see here, uh, because it ended up uh, just nose diving to the downside, is that this actually was you know pushing down. Uh, we were in a sideways market earlier, and we had started going down uh, as we were getting into these bars over here. Um, the trading competition uh, that next round hadn't started uh, quite yet, um, as I recall over here. So, but I ended up going in and getting this trade. So here was the signal bar right there. And then I went short on this bar right here. You, in fact, you can see the vertical line. That's the bar that I went short on. So, you know, I had other indicators, of course, of mine that fired off as well here. And um, then we went ahead and you know, went short right below the low of this. And you'll see what happened. So where's the stop loss on this trade? Stop loss on this trade is right up above the high of this bar, right? That's your stop loss. Okay. And then, of course, you're trailing down for your profit. And you'll notice that once we broke down below that accumulation, it started getting more and more aggressive to the downside. Okay. And then as we go ahead and we take a look here, hey, we'll, uh, the uh, Chris, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, share the opportunity to get those at the end of this um, uh, webinar here. Okay. As we go ahead and we look at uh, gold, here's gold again. Now, what you'll notice here, remember what we're doing. We, we've got a downtrend in place. Notice there's my signal bar. Okay, does everybody see it? There's my signal bar. And we draw that out into the future because we're looking at that signal for at least the next 20 bars. Well, look what happened. No sooner did it go ahead and break down below that area. And then there, there's the actual trade that I took. You can see the vertical line. I took it on that bar there. Look at how it nosedived right to the downside. Everybody see it? Well, guess what? So then I got out of that trade because it dropped very rapidly, very quickly. Well, look what happened just uh, four minutes later. Remember what I told you? That's what I do in the in the day in the day trading environment. I just look for the next signal. Well, four minutes later, it fired off again and started coming right back down again. Does everybody see that? So whether it's a you know two minute, five minute, fifteen minute hourly, daily, weekly bar. It's the time frame that you trade on, gang, and that's what's so important here. This is real world uh, trading, and and I can't emphasize that enough. And so these were, you know, the actual trades that I was taking during the international trading competition to win it. These particular trades here were in gold. Um, let's go ahead and see. Here was one that I took in crude oil at that particular uh, time as well. So it's a little bit hard to see it back here, but the uh, 20 period average, moving average was coming down. Here was the first bar that came back 45, 50% off the low so that next bar I went short and you guys see how it dropped like a stone so is this making sense whether we're looking at this on a um, a daily chart as I showed you with Apple or whether we're looking at it on a two-minute chart or a five-minute chart or a 15-minute chart on an intraday basis the concept is the same I'm identifying a trend I'm identifying the signal bar, which is based on science, not just breaking out the lows of the day and hoping it goes lower, but it's looking for those institutional bars where somebody not only stopped the market from going down, but actually was able to drive it back up. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. And so, um, you know, th this is very important um, to, uh, uh, you know, uh, think about as we're going ahead and uh, you know looking at these, uh, whether and just kind of reviewing that so far, whether it's our extremely successful options program that's going ahead and using the you know methodologies just along these lines um, and others of ours, 
to analyze the underlying instruments and then make great options trades, or whether it's going and winning international trading competitions using this methodology on an intraday basis. This is a really great, really diverse tool that each and every one of you here have the opportunity to go ahead and learn from. Um, so the, what we could do is here's another um, uh, example of these. Uh, here is, uh, and let's see, let's go over here. We looked at that example. Um, this is actually for Metastock. We've got two different versions of our indicators actually programmed in there uh, now. We have the, the what we call the starter package of indicators, uh, which were people for people that get like our nightly video newsletters, our premium nightly video newsletters. We've got this great starter package of indicators. That's all these, so you get those for free with our our, our professional uh, nightly video newsletters. And then we've got uh, the uh, the professional package. That's these, which of course includes. The momentum uh, shift bars um, and the momentum bars and the fast trigger and the traditional trigger there as well. So a lot of great stuff there. Um, and so let me see. Um, we've got questions there, I'm sure. Let me go ahead and answer some of the questions. Uh, signal bar does not indicate a reversal. Look for a trend continuation. Exactly, Jim. So what I'm actually looking for, see, there's two different ways to look at these bars. Okay, a lot of those bars can actually uh, identify reversals. Well, great. If it does, then no harm, no foul. I'm not getting into the trade. Does that make sense, Jim? I'm looking basically effectively. Remember, this is short-term accumulation. I'm looking for when that accumulation no longer accumulates. So basically, I'm looking for when the buys no longer buy. Okay. Um, I'm typically, like, especially when I'm selling the options, I'm looking further out of the money uh, versus in the money, okay? All right, so as we go ahead and, uh, you know, take a look at this, what I want to do is um, uh, uh, give you guys, too, an opportunity to ask questions and let Bobby go ahead and tell you guys how you can uh, actually get these nightly video newsletters um, to, you know, uh, you know be part of this and learn some of these different techniques and see them kind of in our, our premium day trading, how we use it in the live, which is basically a, a reflective of how we use it in the live trading room. Uh, this uh, setup and about 23 of our other setups, as well as the um, uh, swing trading video, how we use it primarily for our, our underlying equity and our options trades. Okay. So with that said, Bobby, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you and then I'm going to take some more questions here as well. So um, as Rob has just kind of shown one basic setup that we use here, um, you can see the wealth of information that we're looking to provide you. And the base of where we do that is in our nightly uh, video newsletters. And with Metastock behind us here for this presentation, we're bringing to you a great package uh, that's going to start with the nightly video newsletter. This is the same newsletter that our institutional students subscribe to money managers, our trading room, and this is really the building block of everything that Rob does here um, on a nightly basis is getting you these newsletters, explaining some of these setups, and this really is something that every professional trader needs is the guidance of an institutional trading trainer that is going to bring you his setups on a nightly basis, and this allows you to immerse yourself in the market, especially if you don't have a chance to watch the market on a daily basis. You get his feedback on what's happened through that trading day, potential setups to look at for the next day. In addition to that nightly newsletter, we're going to bring a couple of exciting courses to you that really bring a lot of value and teach you a little bit more about some of Rob's setups. Uh, the first of which is going to be this fantastic six-hour day and swing trade course, which is going to really give you a good feel for some of these setups like the accumulation distribution setup he just showed you. There's going to be a couple of different setups that deal directly with the indicator sets that uh, that he's shown a little bit of tonight. And this is going to be a six hour course that really details some of those things, showing you on a swing basis and also being able to dial down to an intraday basis. And the best thing about the setups that we provide here is that these setups are all derivative neutral. You can apply them to options, you can apply them to futures, you can apply them to stocks, you can apply them to Forex. The science, the math behind them does not change. And that's something that's very, very crucial for this market because we want to be able to identify opportunities when they present themselves across any marketplace 
and know that what we're looking at is going to be backed up by high probability technicals. The next thing that you're going to get, which I feel is probably the most important part of what we're offering because I've suffered from this in the past, is the fear of pulling the trigger and handling drawdowns. Now, as a trader, every one of us has taken a loss. Some of us have a really hard time getting over the fact that we take losses. And Rob's put together a great presentation on managing your trades, managing a losing trade, and ultimately how to bounce back from some of those trade mistakes that you've made in the past because that's something that at every point in a trader's career you're going to run into a, a situation where you're really having a tr problem pulling the trigger because you took a loss and, and you're afraid to move back. And then the last thing that we're putting together, and this is completely thanks to Metastock, is that uh, if you sign up with us tonight, you will get Rob's basic set of indicators that he just showed for you guys uh, completely for free, uh, along with the, the sign-up of that nightly newsletter. So it really is a tremendous value for you to take advantage of, of what Rob's teaching here and get in front of us with a couple of really solid courses, the starter package of indicators, and the video tutorials. You know, normally, as you can see right here on the screen, we would price this out at just under $2,000. And we're willing to give it to you on the front end for a, an investment of $97 up front because we know that you're going to like it and you're going to want to stay with us. So we're willing to take a bet on the front end that you're going to be with us for a long time. And that's really what we're looking to do here. We have an unbelievably loyal student base. And we're looking to help you guys become a part of that student base as well. And if you're looking to take advantage of that, all you need to do is is visit this website right here, www.becomeabettertrader.com forward slash metastock, and click that Add to Cart. And as you can see, it'll take you directly to a page where there's a couple of different payment options, including PayPal, and we can get you signed up for this right away today. If you're not looking to make a purchase today, but you do want to take a look at Rob's indicators, we ask that you go to www.metastock.com forward slash Hoffman and you can get a 30-day trial with Metastock using Rob's indicators. And that's a great opportunity to really give Metastock the test drive that they deserve and get your exposure to Rob's indicators, which as you've seen tonight are such a powerful tool to add to your existing trading arsenal. And here comes Rob. Okay, thanks, Bobby. And Bobby is the person, when you join us, uh, he'll be reaching out to you to go ahead and introduce uh, himself to you, learn a little bit more about you, so he can find out the kind of trades that you like to make in your, uh, day, your day trading and swing trading, so we kind of custom tailor those nightly videos that come to you for what people's needs are. So it's pretty great. You know, we, we try to do something to really kick off 2014 right and right right now, um, you know, with the help of Metastock there. Um, so you can just go to becomeabettertrader.com forward slash Metastock. Again, you got $97 for all of that good stuff. Uh, so really incredible. The bet we're making, like I said, that you'll stay with us for the long term like so many of our awesome students have. Um, sometimes we lose that bet. Sometimes people just come get all the goodies and they leave. Most of the time people stay. So that's, you know, that's great. So let me go ahead and answer some of your questions there about the setups of strategies and uh, things that we can answer for you tonight uh, to get you guys going here. Um, and uh, let's see here. Let me scroll down. And um, so, you know what, uh, uh, Victor, I tell you what. So what I found is this. It, it's, it's the same thing as like doing the international trading competitions. Why do I do the international trading competitions? Why do I put it out there like that? You know, I've gone ahead and won so many of those international competitions. By going ahead and trading against top traders in the world, I go ahead and I keep my sh my skills the sharpest. Does that make sense? Do you guys all understand that? By going ahead and going up against top traders in the world, yeah, I put it out there for everybody to go ahead and see. You know how you know how I trade, what I do. What I do I, but I prove that I'm a real trader, and I can go up against top traders in the world and show that um, you know I've got something really awesome to offer. So it also just keeps my skills sharp. You know, when you trade in a bubble, you trade by yourself. How many of you have experienced that, Victor? Maybe Victor yourself. Maybe you've done that. When you trade by yourself, trading is kind of a lonely business. 
Um, you know, you, you may wind up in a free chat room with people talking about how sexy a girl is on TV or this next great stock tip from, you know, Uncle Johnny or Aunt Jane and so on and so forth. You know, you get a lot of really uh, crazy noise and disturbances in a lot of those different, you know, uh, free chat rooms and that. So what happens is we, we kind of fall astray and we get away from the things we really need to focus on. By me going ahead and uh, trading against those top traders in the world, I'm going to keep my skills laser focused. I don't get the opportunity, I don't get the luxury of getting sloppy. Does that make sense? So, um, and let's see here. Let's see if I can find some questions there. Uh, can you please, I'll have to scroll this out for a second. I hope that's okay. Um, yeah, Joanne, that's going to go ahead and uh, uh, let's see if we can pull that over for you real quick. So here's the here's the rules page there uh, that you'll want to take a look at, okay? And if you go back and watch the video here, I kind of walk through and explain all of these uh, different things here, where the entries are. I showed the trailing, kind of showed that you know, from live examples what that trailing would look like as you're getting near support resistance, uh, and then we talked about where the stops are there as well, okay? So, you know, great stuff there, okay? And so let's see, what other questions do we have there? Um, stock for, so how do we scan for the stock setups? Well, basically I have a handful of stocks. As you saw, even like with Apple here, uh, uh, Bah uh, Badrush, I, I'm so sorry if I said that wrong, uh, but Badrush, um, I go ahead and um, uh, what I, I usually do is I have a handful of stocks that we're kind of looking for, and you'll see, like, even like with Apple, just how many times that signal will reappear. You saw just in that short amount of time over that two-month period how many times in Tesla that signal reappeared. So usually you can go ahead and keep focus on a handful of stocks kind of looking for that um, you know uh, favorite setup there. Okay. Um, no, Miguel, that doesn't include the live trading room. I mean, but Miguel, what this does include, it includes my premium day trading and my premium nightly swing video, which those include direct access to me through um, the, if you go to the website here, you, you'll even see on the front page of the website there, uh, the discussion forum. So what I do is each night I go ahead and I look, um, you know, at the discussion forum. And when people ask me then about uh, the favorite instruments they want me to look at, I go ahead and I look at those uh, for people in the nightly video so see how people put in their their requests for what they want me to look at and then I'll go ahead and I'll look at those each night there so it's pretty interactive considering it's not the actual live trading room itself hey you're welcome Craig thank you very much okay um, let's see if trading uh, daily bars what criteria do you uh, use to trigger the trailing so basically a lot of that has to do with your risk trading plan um, what you're really looking at there uh, with the um, uh, uh, trailing stop there is it, part of what we talked about there was how, it's it's your personal trading plan how you know how much profit are you typically looking for a trade well let's say your typical profit on a stock is uh, five dollars just making up a number there well then what you're going to want to do is as you're nearing that profit objective you're going to want to go ahead and trail that trade okay um, and by the way yes I see that people are calling into the office there yes you're absolutely welcome to call in um, and uh, we have people going ahead and taking calls um, here this evening so yeah if you don't want to do it over the internet uh, you should be able to go ahead and just call in one of our team here uh, Tanya Sarah Bobby somebody can go ahead and help you there um, but uh, so really the, the trailing process in part depends on your trading plan. But you remember from that example that I showed you just a few minutes ago, one of the key things to remember is as you're approaching a key support or resistance level, the, the real thing, so let's say like I showed is the example of Apple being like $400 is psychological round number support. So initially we can start off with a 50% trailing stop, right? But then as we start getting closer to our resistance there, then what we need to do is go ahead and start to tighten up that trend. So you see how now it went from 50% to closer to like 80%. And then as we get right up near that resistance, now it's gone to 90, 95%. Okay. So that's how you do that there.
Um, you know what? I'm not sure, uh, Emilio, uh, that, that was the course of these different trades here. Um, let's see here. So the question is about the uh, options course here. These were the trades uh, based on one contract that uh, have led us to um, that uh, gross P&L. So I'm not sure what the question is exactly. It's one contract. Um, and, you know, each of these different trades had their own uh, profit loss towards that. Okay. And um, so great stuff. And it kind of shows how you can use some of these different setups uh, towards that as well. Okay. Yeah, you can go to www.becomeabettertrader.com forward slash Metastock. Um, it's an awesome way to kick off 2014, right? Get all those goodies. Get the free uh, version of the starter package of the indicators. Go ahead and get the swing trading video. Get the uh, fear of handling the drawdown and pulling the trigger video. Um, so lots of great stuff to watch now over the next couple weeks with the holidays. And then go ahead and, um, you know, just get lots of great um, premium content from the day trading side and the swing trading side. It's really great to see what we're doing in the live trading room each day um, through the videos and then the um, uh, oh Emmy Lou thank you uh, that's that's great so <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, okay so great is there any other questions that I'm going to answer let's see um, yeah okay so we talked we answered some of those questions there good awesome well, like I said, I really appreciate you guys going ahead and having us tonight. What's important to note here, these are the same strategies I use, not only for our awesome options trading program on the swing trading side, but it's also the same things that we use uh, live intraday where I'm winning international competitions with one of you know these setups as well, okay? So the, you know, it's really great uh, to go ahead and have a, um, a nice diverse setup strategy. It's, it's one amongst you know, 24 of our different strategies here, but it's great to see that like this particular one, it's diversity amongst multiple asset classes and multiple time frames and its functions, you know, everything from options and swing trading right on down to winning international competition. So wanted to give, you know, Jeff wanted to give you something that was really useful to help kick off your 2014 right. Um, and like I said, uh, he put a lot of effort to make sure that people could get access like to these, uh, the starter package of indicators if they get the, the, indic the um, uh, you know, this little $97 offer for you. So pretty cool cool stuff. So I'm glad that we could be here with you tonight. Um, I hope you guys took some serious things away to learn, you know, from tonight because uh, it wasn't just fluffy stuff. It's the stuff that we're doing in our live trading. And like I said, winning real money live trading competitions and real options trading with real money there. So uh, it doesn't get any more real than that, gang. That's that's the real world and a real uh, awesome opportunity for you to join us and kick off your 2014 right. So Jeff, uh, I want to uh, send it over to you to uh, to you see if there's any other Metastock related questions there, they can go to the, you know, metastock.com forward slash Hoffman to go and get the 30 day trial to your uh, platform. And we shared that information with them as well. And anything else you guys would like to ask us or learn from, we're happy to help here. Okay. Well, I just want to close by saying, Hey, thanks Rob. We really appreciate you having you in here. Um, you guys know that we really like to work with people that we do not know and that we've trust. Rob and I have known each other for a number of years, and there's not too many people that can say they've uh, been rated the best uh, international trading champion twice in a row. So, Rob, thanks for coming tonight. Really appreciate it. If you're kind of on the fence about uh, become a better trader, you should definitely check it out. It's definitely a really, really good service. Uh, thanks, guys. To close up uh, the year's, probably the last webinar of the year, I hope everybody has a happy uh, happy New Year season, and we'll see you next year. Um, and uh, we, I, we do really appreciate all of you guys' support and your being customers and coming to our webinars and all of that kind of good stuff. And we'll see you again uh, next year. Thanks, guys. Bye.